Big welcome to you all to our channel. We are Team Crushing the Meta, and you're here with your boy. And we're for you guys, as you can see from the screen, with the premium collection reveals. For today's reveal, we're gonna talk about these strides from Go Paladin and Shadow Paladin. If one of your favorites is one of the cards that you have on the screen, that you should definitely check the links in the description section below because. We have talked about all of these strides, so if you want to hear our thoughts, there you will find the link. Alright, if you are new to our channel, don't forget to click on the subscribe button and click also on the notification button so you would know whenever we upload a new video. Alright, enough about that, without further ado, let's jump into the actual content of this video. So first we're going to talk about the one from Shadow Paladin. So it's Dark Dragon Chain Ranker Dragon. The name is already really nice. And then we have its skill and of course the card as in its art. So let's read its skill. It's once per turn, a cost is turning something face up from your G zone. And then until the end of turn, this card will copy all the original ability of your heart. Of your heart cards. And then you would say, hey. I remember a card that does the same thing. Well, yes, you're correct. It's the exact same skill as the one from Royal Paladin. Then we'd say, okay, maybe its GB3 ability is different. Well, no, it's not. The only requirement is that new no, you have great ones or less on the field, and with the um, with the Royal Paladin one, you need great twos or greater. So that's the only differences between these two cards. All right. Uh, before we go and talk like about the card and what it could do and if this was good or a bad thing Let's talk about the art because I The art is just really sick like the art and the name are really amazing I didn't read the flavor text yet, but look look at it look at the chains the colors of it does remind me a little bit of Claret Sword, but also like the other strides from the uh, Revengers like we got like Ren played in the, in, in the series so it's, it's an amazing start both of them look really really sick and then we talk about the skill and how this card fits the clan all right so am I or are we from crushing the meta angry that this card got the same treatment or this exact same skill as the one from Royals well we're not angry we're disappointed <laughs> um, my personal ideas shifted when I saw this card from the developers giving us a card that fits the clan and is unique to they are very lazy and they're actually creating the exact same skill but for each clan differently and then we came, when they came to Royals and Shadows they thought hey we could pretty much create the same card and it uh, kind of also does the same thing but what's the irony here? It does work perfectly in Shadow Paladins, as well as in Royal Paladins, but as well as in every other clan. So this card is far from unique, even if there was only one, but now I see it clearly because I didn't saw that first with Royal Paladins. Even if we only had one of these which had this skill, it's still not unique at all. But this fits Shadow Paladin very well. Yes, we agree on that. How about its second ability? Because when you talk about the first ability, it's really good because it's bringing Modred and Claret Sword to this format. And that's really nice because people play those decks and uh, they put a lot of money and effort into creating them and they are also expensive decks and now they could play that uh, in premium as well, so not only in standard. Also, some of my friends who already created Claret Sword or wanted to create Modred now have the push to create those decks in premium because they had it in standard and they, they just needed that push to create them in premium. So this card is very good when, when, when we talk about that fact of the game. Also, it's a money maker because even people who have Luard now would think, hey, maybe we should get Modred as well. We could play that in standard, but now we could also play it in premium. So it's it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's good for Bushy. It's good for the players. But the first ability being not unique, that's okay. Because it's still unique. Because it copies the hearts, which hearts from Shadow Paladin are different from the hearts from Royal Paladins. So that's okay. That's That would be unique skill in each and every clan. That's alright. They could have 
made all of the strides have that skill and they'll still be okay. Then we come to the second skill, it's GB3 skill. And that's when we see the developers were very lazy and they didn't think about what the clan already had. Because we have Morfessa when it comes to Shadow Paladin. So this car's GB3 ability should not have gift power, nor or crit, nor have an enhanced battle door skill or a battle door skill at all. It should have done something different because all of those three things, uh, Morfessa does that already. And if we talk about the enhanced battle door skill, then the Royal Paladin Stride does that already. That's the only thing that makes this card unique from the others is that the fact that it has that GB3 ability that is very effective, but it should be different, right? So when it comes to us from crushing the meta, like we had a big discussion about these cards and if Bushi is being lazy or they are being less unique or uh, the GB3 ability. And we came to the conclusion that the first ability is all right. Even with the second ability, it fits the clan very well. The problem is it's not unique and it already does what something that Shadow Paladin already does. And now if you talk about Shadows and Mortred, then the combos that Royals need to do with so many counter blasts and setup, it, it, it's not required anymore because Mordred could do that very easy with one counter blast and you having Blast of Darts, which is very easy to accomplish in Shadows to catch your Blast of Darts, especially in Premium. Alright, so that's those are our thoughts when it comes to this card of fitting the clan and the decks that are being played. Um, if we talk how about the clan, what would it do in the format? Well, the clan is already very strong and when we talk about Luar, then this is just another weapon to add to their arsenal. So that's that's amazing. They they will not like build a deck around this. But when we talk about the other two contenders, which are uh, Claret Sword and Phantom uh, Modred or Modred Phantom, uh, that that would be very nice because Claret has of course their their his own strides like the uh, the Hillheim. Although it could work with other cards as well, but it has that. So I think that. JJ would be very happy with this. He could just build Claret Sword easier now, and Modred would work. Will this card make Shadows top tier? Well, yes, but indirectly. I will tell you why. If we talk about Modred, then what Modred lacks is that if you go first, the deck does not do much because you don't have your opponent is not on grade 3 yet, so you could not use moderate skill to pressure your opponent even more. But what you could do is you create more markers, right? You could do that. And you could like put some pressure on your opponent, but you don't want to lose your Blast of Darks the, that early, because we are talking about premium right here, so things on the field will not stay on the field. They will they will get retired, they will get binded, they will, they will happen a lot of things. So, but if you go first, as I said, you will not have moderate skill, but you have a heal in your hand. That heal trigger will get you to this card right away. And your first stride would be this card, and that would be devastating. If you go second, then you would have to do a setup. Then you will go like for Mofessa, have, uh, have a half Mofessa turn, make some pluses, and then next turn you have the ability to go to this card. And when we talk about Claret Sword, of course, there are a lot of options. So, how or what did I mean when I say that this card will make Shadow top tier? Shadows or Luar are already top tier, uh, but this card will push them even more to be top tier is because the representation of Shadows will be more. Like, we already see a lot of representation for Shadows when we talk about standards. And in Premium, the same. It's an alright representation. It's not the most, but it's alright. And now, with people could just take those expensive decks that they build in standard, like I've seen a full out SP moderate deck, a cleric deck, because shadow players love their shadows, and this card gives them the opportunity to play that in premium. So all in all, I think it's a great card, I think the skill suits the land very well, although the, the fact that it's the exact same one as from Royals makes it... Um, less unique and also let's it's not less fun to play but it's just you would rather have a different skill 
And his GB3 ability, in my opinion, should have been different because this is devastating with the combo that you do with, like, the easiest combo that you do with the with the Motred Phantom, right? You could, like, do even more. You could attack first with a Rhaegar, then recall a Blast of Dark, then do stuff, or just go Blast of Dark, Blast of Dark, uh, Phantom, and then uh, restand those Blast of Darks. All right? It's, it's that easy. All right, that's it about him. Let's talk about our next contender, which is the Dragon from Gold Paladins, as the name said. Gold Dragon, I think it should say Blemmin's Dragon, but I don't know if that uh, translation is correct, we'll have to wait and see. But it's a, it's a Golden Dragon, as the other one is the uh, Dark Shadow Black Dragon. So uh, this guy has uh, the ability, which is uh, Auto on Fagard, when it attacks, you hit a cost, which is Flipping something face up, that's it. And uh, putting uh, two regards to the bottom of your deck in any order. Then you draw two cards and you call up to two cards from your hand to regard circle. If you have called two, this guy gains a crit. Yes, we have heard this skill as well. Um, did we get everything that is unique? Oof, I'm afraid it will get for the other clans. Uh, what do I mean? Oh, sorry guys, I meant uh, we have uh, that uh, already, which is uh, Nubitama. Nubitama has almost the same skill. What Nubitama does is that it bounces your whole field, but it needs to retire two great zeros. And then it also could get the 10k and a crit, and not just a crit. So, what does this mean for gold? Well, first let's talk about the art. <laughs> I think the art is nice. Um, I don't think that they put too much effort into it, like the background is pretty cool, it's, uh, it's not too dark or too gloomy uh, or too white or too too happy, it's just uh, it's just nice, like a nice crystal in the background and uh, yeah, I think his sword in there is just ready to to uh, put it in there and uh, I think it's a, it's, a, it's a beautiful card and it suits golds very well. Uh, as you can hear, golds is not one of my favorite clans but I appreciate the art like this, which is the dragon but the knight in the same time, which is uh, and also I, I like the armor and the working of the crystals in the armor and also in the sword. That's that's a very nice touch from Abushi. Um, now we talk about how this this skill fits the clan. Well, uh, when we talk about gold paladins, especially in G and also like uh, in V right now, uh, when you call from the top of your deck or when you call from the deck at all. Or from hand or from other way you could call more so this card opens a lot of um, combos like you have the superior calling which I already only put one card over there which is uh, the second more but of course you have way more but when you attack you could first attack with all of your regular let's say you have only two excel circles all right or one excel circle so you have three uh, front row regards so you will attack with those and then uh, you attack with your frame guards. And it does not cost a counter blast. Well, the other golden dragon that we had before cost a counter blast. And that's when they could not multi attack. But with this card, they could just multi attack on your ass. And you can't do nothing about it. So that makes the card very strong. People do not understand how effective this card could be. By attacking first with your rare guards, then attacking with this card means that you could now draw and call again. Those cards that you put to the bottom of your deck could be triggers. You could just call those triggers. I've seen golds do that. And then you put those to the bottom of your deck and you call, you draw two and you call two new rare cards. And the rare cards that you call could be rare cards that give you counter charge, rare cards that draw you, rare cards that gain power, rare cards that call even more. And with that, you have a whole new attacking field. So is this card as strong as I'm? Um, trying to explain yes it actually is i have tested the one from nuba and it does a lot for the clan and nuba does not have on place check the top three and call a new one that does not do that and it does also not have an excel circle to benefit from that calling but gold does so <clears throat> i think that this card is amazing will this card put golds at the top tiers again Let's see hard question. Does this card, does it have what it needs to be a finisher? Um, yes, actually it does. 
but will it compete with the other clans? I think it could. I, I think that we will see Gold Paladins do great again. I think that this card being a very good first stride that does not cost counter blast is, is really good. And it, it would do something for the clan. It would definitely motivate people that did, just left gold and didn't play it again to play it again. Uh, it would not make it tier 1, but it could definitely bring it back to be a tier 2 or a tier 3 deck at least. And uh, as I said, we will see more representation of goals and definitely from shadows uh, with these cards. Alright, so that's it for gold. Now we get to the clans that we have left. So the clans that we still did not see, Aquaforce and Bermuda, Mea Coli, Pilmon and Spike. These five clans, we haven't seen their stride yet, so maybe later on today we will see them, I don't know. The time that I'm making this video, we don't know them yet, so next video you will see more. And we also have the date, which when this premium collection uh, set will drop which is May the 22 for um, 22nd for Japan and uh, for the TCG format for Europe, America and others all around the world that uh, play in the English format, that would be the 7th of August, which would mean that it will drop in the qualifier forwards if we would have a qualifier forwards this year. But if we will, then uh, this set will drop like in, in between at the start of the qualifiers. So all of these strides will be played for people that are qual gonna qualify for awards. So I think that that's cool. I think that uh, I'm, I'm very excited to, uh, to see what my clans uh, will get. Uh, for me, I'm still waiting for Make Only and Spike. Definitely Spike. Um, I've already had like uh, most of my other premium clans. Alright, that's it for us, that's it for this video, I'd like to thank you all for watching, thank you all for all the support you give to our channel, and don't forget to let us know in the comment section below, what do you think that the skill of the Shadow Paladin Stride should have been? Like the GB3 skill, the first skill, we're okay with that, but the GB3 skill should have been, it, should ha it, should, it shouldn't be a Bellador skill or an Enhance, it shouldn't be a crit, that's my opinion. And it shouldn't be power giving. Should it be retirement? Should it be call possibility? Should it be something different? I don't know. Let me know. Alright, thanks for watching guys. Until next time.